In other world news, the U.S. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson has been holding talks in Beijing this Saturday and topping the agenda at those talks. The tense standoff with North Korea, an issue in which the Trump administration insists that China takes a leading role. While speaking to reporters there in the Chinese capital, Tillerson said that Washington is in fact engaged with Pyongyang and that it's seeking to begin dialogue with the goal of reducing those tensions. Well, for more analysis, we can speak now to Professor Catherine Moon from the Department of Political Science at Wellesley College, also a non-resident senior fellow at the Brookings Institution. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. Now, it's quite difficult to make sense of what we've been hearing today, because uh, on the one hand, we had Rick's, Rex Tellison saying that the U.S. has channels for dialogue with Pyongyang. On the other hand, we had another source from Washington saying that Pyongyang isn't actually interested in dialogue at all. What do you read into that? Well, first of all, when uh, Mr. Tillerson says direct dialogue, uh, direct channels rather to North Korea, I don't know what he means uh, because there is no official direct dialogue that is going on. Um, it's possible that uh, Ambassador Yoon, uh, who is running the Korea, North Korea and Japan, South Korea uh, portfolio out of the State Department, uh, is in communication because he had had some contact to release Otto Warmbier, the American student who had been detained uh, and then and then fallen into a coma some months ago. Um, but there are uh, rumors. I have heard that North Koreans have been trying to reach out to some more conventional Republicans in Washington to get a sense of how to interpret Mr. Trump's uh, very threatening messages of late. Um, I don't quite uh, know for sure if the U.S. government has a clear trajectory or a direction about where the talks would go if there are going to be dialogue, if there is going to be dialogue. And most important is what is going to be on the table. Right now, the U.S. has not, uh, for months and months since President Trump has been in office, showed any clear sign of what the U.S. might be able to offer. And the North Koreans have repeatedly said they are not interested, and I don't think they genuinely will be interested until they reach operable ICBM capacity that could be U.S. OK, and just on the issue of China, of course, uh, China playing host to Rex Tillerson and the issue of North Korea being absolutely at the top of the agenda at those talks. Uh, President Trump himself is going to visit China in November, and he all along has been saying that China needs to be uh, taking a leading role in diffusing this crisis. But it does sound like China is doing that and more, in fact, than uh, the, the Washington is actually asking in terms of tightening the screws on the leadership there in, in, in North Korea. Yes, uh, very recently it's uh, apparent that China is making more public its efforts to, I don't want to say control North Korea, but definitely put, put additional pressure. But we have to remember the Chinese do what they do based on their own national self-interest. So cutting back on coal supplies or reducing them or stopping them uh, to North Korea, it had a lot to do with the overproduction of steel in China. So they didn't need the coal as much, or, or the, I'm sorry, the iron ore as much. Um, and lately, they do not want to have uh, a North Korean nuclear test uh, create um, havoc or insecurity or some kind of turmoil in this region because in the recent um, tests during those periods, uh, Chinese uh, living on the border region did feel and see some of the cracks in the walls, the rumbling, the moving, the shaking like earthquake uh, conditions. So there are numerous reasons why China might be putting pressure on, could be domestic politics, um, as well as international pressure. But bottom line, I do not think that the Chinese actually can control the North Koreans. And even if China, quote, tightens the screws, the question is how much will North Korea be willing to respond to that kind of pressure? OK, well, thank you so much for sharing that with us. Professor Catherine Moon from the Department of Political Science at Wellesley College and non-resident senior fellow at the Brookings Institution, thank you so much for speaking to France 24.